Welcome back to some professional StarCraft to a Terran vs. Zerg, the quarterfinals of DreamHack Atlanta 2022. The best of Korea headed off. Let me first introduce perpetually the fourth best Zerg player in the world. Can he move up a rung today? It's Solar. He's so good at everything, just not quite great enough to break through. He's got quite an obstacle on the other side. Of course, it's the man, the myth, the Maru. Who defines and redefines Terran time and time again, continually proving that, well, Terran units can compete. The ghosts are that good. The liberators are that useful. And the marines are never to be underestimated. Honestly, Maru many times makes it look easy uh, when we all know, or at least we'll admit to ourselves that it's a little bit harder than that. I'm not sure what it is about Solar. Uh, like, he, he, he's right there. He's like a half step behind Cyril all the time. Like, in, in you might be like fourth, though. You always say fourth. Um... Well, it's Cyril, it's Rainer, though that's a little shakier recently, especially since he wasn't able to attend Dream Mac Atlanta. And then it's like a revolving door of what? It was Rogue, it was Dark, um, very occasionally Sue, but maybe not as much recently. I think Dark is definitely a solid third, if not second Zerg right now. Possibly. Like, we haven't seen. Dark was not. Um, able to attend DreamHack Atlanta because he didn't qualify. Why? Because he got knocked out by Cure in GSL. And then when asked, oh, so did Solar, I might add. Um, actually, Solar came out second in that in that group, I believe. I'm not sure. Either way, it was the top GSL players who made it. Um, and that's why Dark is not gracing us with his presence. But And then, I, I'm never going to miss an opportunity to bring this up. And then Cure in the interview, when asked, like, how did you beat Dark and Solar? Um, who you're usually an underdog against. And Kira said, it's because Terran players work hard and Zerg players are lazy. Um, and that's a pretty, that was the direct quote, not like, <laughs> uh, so in case you thought Kira was not one of those Terrans, you'd be wrong. Um, and speaking of those Terrans, double factory. Wow, this is, what a resurgence of this build. The Double Factory Hellions. The Surprise Blue Flame. Hiding that second factory at the back. I, I thought I would have to fill at least another minute or two, but Maru is not going 3cc to kick it off. He's going to try to burninate the countryside and all the drones on the creep. With those early Hellions, he, is he going to get a tech lab and go for Blue Flame? Indeed. And this almost certainly means we're going to be looking at mech as opposed to a, uh, a bio follow-up, because two factories, part of the reason mech is so hard to really get started is the infrastructure itself. The factories cost 100 gas on top of those 150 minerals. So just building those unit production facilities already slows down uh, everything else. So it's a big investment to make early on, and it's important for Maru to keep it hidden as long as he can. Uh, so that way, Solar can't respond. The best response would be likely Roaches uh, and Banelings in a pinch, but Roaches are the ideal because this is going to be so many Hellions. So they're just going to run past the Queens. It's going to burn through any Zerglings. Um, obviously, you want to hide this. Yeah, Maru has a Viking out, finds the Overlord hanging out. There's even a tech lab. I wonder what that's for. Maru has been toying with ravens. And it looks like he has the money for it. It's going to be a banshee. Blue flame on the way. Finishing up. He's hidden the rest of... He doesn't want to show his hand here, obviously. The hellion's still in the base. Solar, Solar is continually sending zerglings. He's definitely suspicious. As Maru usually has shown something by now. We're five minutes in. Uh, it's kind of weird 
that only a handful of Hellions have showed up on the map. Yeah, two Marines. Solar is so suspicious right now. He's got a Roach Horn on the way. He doesn't know exactly what he's dealing with, but he saw the Viking, even though it was a bit on the late side. And here we go. Well, a whole bunch of blue flame Hellions. And does Solar know? He built two evil chambers, but not to wall off. Surprise! Oh, no! Yeah, well, he was suspicious, but I don't think he has nearly enough Zerglings to deal with this. The queen can technically block on the ramp. A single queen! Thick enough to block the ramp on her own. Just gonna play ring around the hatchery here. The knitting crew just severely discourages a block. Evo chamber block is good. Solar's micro so far has been pretty much impeccable. He's only lost three drugs. I don't, wow. This is my experience. This build seems to, well, maybe it should, it belongs in a museum. Okay, like. There's just too many queens early. He lost 10 Hellions. He killed five drones. There's Hyper She's on the way behind, but this is, that is not remotely as much damage as was needed. Like, I, I hesitate to say enough because it's kind of hard to tell, but the thing is, there's just so many queens out. He didn't know it was coming. It's just build queens and you got most of your bases covered. All puns incredibly intended. Uh, and the, the Banshees and the Hyper Shees, potentially. The Hyper Flight Banshees, which have more speed than any unit but a, but a Muta. And even then, they give them quite a stiff chase. Uh, that'll be interesting, but Solar, I think, has, has realized what he's dealing with. He's dealing with this kind of battle mech style. The Hellion Cyclone Banshee. Incredibly mobile. He's going to counter it with, with roaches and speed for himself. And then he has access to either Corruptors or maybe even Mutas. Because uh, Cyclones don't actually do particularly great uh, against those. So Maru so far getting deflected at every turn. Solar looking very solid. Um, his defenses stalwart. And his micro is acceptable. Roach is getting roasted, but, like, the, the Banshees are on the wrong side of the map to deal with this. Another Banshee comes out, which definitely gives away the, the plans here. Enough Hellions to soften up the Roaches. Burn through the Carapace. He even goes into Hellbat mode. Gets a little bit of extra HP and definitely better at fighting Roaches themselves. Viking on the deck. Oh, <laughs> what a save. What a save! And Maru also defending this with uh, minimal losses. Yeah. He's going to lose two SCVs. Maru actually has 74 workers. Now, here's the danger. As a Zerg, it's very easy to get caught up in building your static defense and, and adding more tech and, and hatcheries and extractors. And suddenly, even though he's taken very little damage, every extractor, every hatchery, every spore crawler is a drone that he has to spend. And that's why Solar's only at 70 drones right now to 76 SCVs, but there's very limited anti here. Maru didn't have an NG bay until this moment. I can't believe he didn't even build the NG bay. He just did not expect the Mutas. He didn't think Solar would have the money, but the Spire, the Mutas are doing critical damage right now. This is real damage. 19 workers, Widow Mines activate, but they activate on the Zerglings. Another set of mines, he gets rid of one, probably worth sacrificing a Muta to get rid of the other. The Cyclones will lock on, but they don't do particularly great against the Mutas, who can, you know, fly away. The NG Bay is in one of the worst possible locations, the only building that Solar can reliably hit. The Muta count is overwhelming, the, the Engineering Bay is his only reliable static defense, and he's about to lose it. Maru may have bit off way more than he could chew, Solar chose. The right move here, and in game one, is looking very likely to overrun Maru. Solar responded strongly. He didn't sit back. He got up in Maru's grill before he could get his tech up in Maru. By the way, Maru had a fourth command center, the greedy devil. None of that. None of that. Get him out of here. Solar, game one. Maru, I, I honestly, I don't know what's up with the Hellion build. 
it it truly doesn't feel at this level against this level of Zerg. So we're gonna have like like a Cyril, a Solar, a Dark. You're just the blue flame Hellions are not gonna get that much more than your regular Hellions. Like uh, the upgrade, they it feels like hitting harder with slightly less Hellions may be better than than trying to go for that fancy upgrade. Yes, you'll you'll kill workers a little easier. You'll roast the the zerglings, but you're you're racing against the queen count. Of course, if Solar didn't handle it so incredibly calmly, putting the queen on the ramp, that's a key one, because one queen can block the ramp against Hellions. That's why sometimes you bring a reaper to bounce the queen out of the way, um, as well as the evo chamber blocks when possible. Like, that was, despite the heat of the Hellions, calm under fire. And, like, three drones, and I'm not even sure the Hellions killed three, like, if there was a banshee in the back. I don't know. Also, though, like, Maru has played Solar and played these series. He's not. That, that's his throwaway build, I think. You get a win on game one on a relatively even map. Maybe even Zerg favored, I don't know. It, it's not decisive either way, I don't think. Fine. Whatever. All right. Uh, Solar handled himself well. But is he going to handle the double Reaper build here? This is going to wall off the first two and three quarters bases. Uh, if you include that back pocket. He's uh, building the second depot in the Nidus defense location. Or at least Nidus scouting location. Alright, we got two barracks on the way. Reaper micro time. Speed for Solar. Who actually... Is that a pool first? Indeed. That's actually a speed first build. Wow, spicy. How does this play out? And conveniently for Maru, he's on the right side of the map. Literally and figuratively, because that means his add-ons will build where Zerglings can't hit him. He actually lost, uh, he didn't lose that game to Dark, I believe, in the Champions Cup Finals. But Dark made a snack out of the add-ons on this map, on opposite positions. One of the few times the side of the map actually really matters. It used to be an even bigger deal back when Baneling Bus were such a huge thing in Wings of Liberty. Because an add-on, like a tech lab, has a lot less HP than a barracks. Uh, that's a science fact right there. So, uh, being on the vulnerable side definitely increases the opportunity for, for a Zerg counterattack. Now, the, the very small, very little mentioned, because it really is marginal at best, is on this side of the map, the Zerg larva spawns slightly further away from the mineral mine. So it takes another second or two uh, for some of the hatcheries to, to bring their drones. And the larva spawns where, like, usually towards enemy units as opposed to away. This is rarely relevant except in, like, early pool builds in ZVZ. Uh, where maybe having your larva on the wrong side makes it a little bit harder to defend. I guess it's like a spine crawler rush. It's not, it, it's even less of a factor than the add-on placement, but occasionally. Maru spots the Ovi. The Ovi will spot the, com wow. Wow, okay. Well, this tells a story. That bunker solar will not scout it, but I think too many times. This is a new Maru. This is a crazy new Maru we're watching. Like, the Maru I know would have built three CCs with no SCV scout and just blindly sent his Reapers across the map and gotten Baneling busted. But this new Maru actually built a bunker in his main just in case of a, a, an early all-in. He salvaged it now, uh, confident that he, he's not dealing with anything along those lines, I guess, but still feels a little early to salvage it. But every he's the, the only player that I am confident uh, actually cares about those 75 minerals in the bunker as an actual part of the build, as opposed to a emotional um, boon of feeling like you're doing something important, which is pretty much everyone else. 
from bronze to, you know, not Maru. <laughs> so many times. Salvage the bunker and, oh, are those three charge lots? If only there was something to... Okay, all right. This is an angry coach. This is actually the DreamHack quarterfinals. It's kind of a... These guys are pretty good. Well, Reapers cleared out the path. I'm not sure if Solar saw the medevac. Uh, either way, it, it is likely he will realize what's in it. But does that matter? Is always the question with Little Minds. Oh, all right, well. It's three drones. Eh. One more mine in the main. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna hit the queen. Annoying. Eh. Reapers come in. 11 drones on the way. The Reaper's gonna get a couple kills. <laughs> so we're trying to dodge. Well, actually, some of those queens were softened up. The Reaper's ending up doing more than the mines themselves here. But, find another drone. Either way, though, Solar just kind of slaps it away. And he's gonna be at 70 drones. Does he have Evo Chambers? Indeed he does. Does he have a lair? Yes. Yeah, Baneling Speed on the way. Maru lining up another medevac drop. It's not like Maru has cost him anything. Uh, he's going to have three bases. Adding on barracks four and five. Got a couple medevacs on the way. But overall, Solar is more than comfortable now. 73 drones is the perfect number, right? to deal with a not even three base Terran. If you stay on this number, you can probably stay on this number all the way to 200 supply. Uh, some players will go for that 80, 90 count, but it isn't particularly necessary if you know you have uh, map control, which many times you can you can guarantee, especially when Maru is going, he's just going for Widow Mine drops here. And by just going for Widow Mine drops, I mean plus, you know, uh, 16 marines. Little mines. They connect. They hit the medevacs as well. Maru dives into the main. Yeah, it's not gonna stop here. And Solar doesn't have any tech to deal with this. He doesn't have a spire. He doesn't have a uh, hydra den. Doesn't have a hive, uh, which I got halfway to saying, but obviously. And this is. It's it's not. Trying to maneuver and, and deal with the banes. These two medevacs here. Solar rethinks the hydralis strat. Yeah. He's gonna add the hydras in here. As you really you you already have to be at each base with enough units to defend. Otherwise, you're gonna start taking worse and worse fights. There's no real counterattack opportunity because of just how the map is. That he can't run into the third. So, at the moment... Ooh. And there's still that other Widow Mine as well. I don't I don't think he's dealt with it. Maru? Let's go to the Maru action camp. He's having fun with it. This is Terran right here. This is what every Terran wants to be doing. It's double drops all over the map, rotating around, pretending to play an entire MOBA by yourself. Like, you got a Marines in the back. You got great production. Target fire. Picks up. Gets out. Over to another base. Lifting to the fourth. Another drop. And he's got even more medevacs out there. And he's not vulnerable at home. That's the thing. Like, uh, that wall at the front. He's going to get that planetary established. He knows he's got so on the ropes. Look at the creep spread. It's barely outside the bases. That's an indicator of how much he's had to move his queens around here. And the stutter step is great. The marine count is too damn high. And Solar is not able to deal with this. Maru knows his banelings are about to finish. Picks up, goes to the back, already off a of creep. Gets a planetary. Maru dealing with that backside. I'm not sure if Solar has anything back there, but well, the reinforcements are on the way as well. Maru, a uh, bit of an F2 on that meta back, I think, but uh, setting up the mine drop. Dealt with the back base. The pocket base is a liability for Zerk. The mines in the front line, and then the marines to cover, so they only hit the juiciest clumps. 
All right, he stands his ground. Yeah, it's not nearly enough aimlings over there. Command center upgrade complete. Another scan. Looking for the army, sees it. On the high ground, looking for more. Finally gonna lose the medevac, or is he? Finding some more target fire, gets the banes. That one connects. Another round of banelings. Stutter stepping back, letting the widow mine do its thing. The shot goes off. Some more production. Another shot connects. And he's just keeping the pressure up. Uh, the the fourth base is just eternally saturated. He's got 171 supply to 140. He knows he's getting the damage done. The free split throws Marines into the banes. So that way, the Widow Mines get better connections. He sacrifices the few for the good of the many. He's got 2-2. Two, two. Drilling Claw's about to finish. Marauders in front. Marines behind. Files back. 2-2's about to finish for Solar, but is there anything left with which to use it? GG. Maru grinds at home. Wow. Solar was looking good, but I think the hesitation on getting the Hydra done, like, I, I think he wanted to go straight to Hive, which is... If you can get away with it, probably ideal. That way you can match the upgrades. Vipers are your best late game option. But Maru saw the lack of anti-air. And uh, approved. It's all tied up. Game three. Day to see. Yeah, as soon as Maru sees just Massling... Like, it's a, it's, it's a free fly zone. It's free real estate for Maru. Part of the reason was a uh, moon dance. Solar could not even, even if he had uh, the same kind of advantage, like the tech advantage, you can't just get up in there third. Maru had uh, a barracks wall. There's no getting through that. Not like on Tropical Sacrifice, but the third base is the most exposed one. So that means Maru was going to get to like a hundred something supply, very likely, unless Solar was going to commit to an all-in, uh, which he clearly didn't want to do. Game three. I That's a disheartening one, to be honest. Like, Solar did nothing wrong. Nothing blatantly wrong, at least. Like, he didn't take damage from the mines. Um, he didn't fail to deal with the drops. He just got ground down. Like, at some point, Maru reached a critical mass, and that point was too quick for Solar to deal with. I don't think any part of it was like, Solar made a bad call here. Nope, just a lot of little wins add up to a big one. All right, Solar. Solar, God, he's so standard. I mean, he's great. But I will say, his, his as, as we know, his most standout attribute is he has no standard, uh, standout attributes. Um, he's just pretty good. All right, Maru trying a, a uh, early reactor build. Off, oh, not a CC first, obviously. The reactor first, no Reaper. Gonna get four Marines into reactor factory. This is, all of this is mind games. This part of the game, like if, if Solar, nobody does this, nobody would do this at, at this level, but like, if Solar just happened to make 16 lings or something, 
and Maru was doing this build. Since Maru has not scouted, this is his first scout. Command He's just walking up. Complete. Like if, if Solar just happened to make 16, there's a lot of games where if somebody just went for 16 Zerglings, they'd win. But they don't because you're still taking, like there's no guarantee. There's no way to know that this is what they're doing. So Maru will get away with it. And in fact, he'll get away with it and thrive because yeah, the Marines draw the Queens out of position. Okay. I mean, it, this isn't great. He's softening up some drones. He actually gets two drone kills. He gets two thirds of the damage he got with 15 blue flame hellions in game one. So yeah, he's going for the mine drops again. The thing about the widow mines is even in dealing with them, even if you shut them down, they've bought a lot of space. Um, it's very hard to just outright shut down widow mine drops. You kind of just deflect them. Now, here's that, that 16 Zergling situation, but Maru, sta he started. Like, if Maru had not committed across the map. Never mind. Never mind. No amount of Zerglings. With Maru, and, like, he's got four Marines, got a couple Hellions. No amount of Zerglings. I take it all back. Now I look dumb. And of course, those Zerglings would have had to have been so early, they would have severely undercut Solar's economy. And that's another thing. Um, larva management. Every set of Zerglings you... Every set of Zerglings you make is a drone you didn't. Uh, you don't just have production and and workers split like that. And that is, that is why we don't see those 16 Zergling games. Is because you have to make the conscious decision to hamstring your economy. Uh, on the flip of a coin or worse. And that is why Maru keeps getting away with these greedy belts. God. He's such a good gambler. And we know the Koreans love their gambling. Possibly too much in StarCraft 2, but... A lair on the way. The Liberator shows up. Oh god, the Zerglings F2'd into it. I think Solar was trying to draw the Liberator fire, but Maru had already queued it up on drones. I don't know if that works. I'm pretty sure it'll attack the closest threat. Maybe, maybe you could do that. But either way, very niche case. So far, Maru killing a few uh, Zerglings, killing a few drones. I can't like, I'm already adjusting my commentary because last game, Solar was in a similar position. Last game, Solar had a drone lead. He was getting a fourth, decent creep spread, shut down the early pressure. And guess what? Maru just cut him to pieces. Um, that's a hell bad drop. I mean, he went armory for the widow mines, but here we are. This time, though, Solar is getting a quicker Hydra Den. His upgrades are comparable to Maru. He isn't going to be at a several minute disadvantage, especially not on 2 2 if he keeps up. So, Solar does have. Uh, a better opportunity to fight with his actual army, I think. God, this widow mine. It has eight kills. It's still there. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone. Who knows? <sighs> the one moment when the queen finally seemed ready to deal with it. Scampers away. What's the kicker here? Oh my god, there's no spore. Oh no. Oh. There's no spore. Just the amount of time. So here's the kicker, by the way. The kicker is three medivacs. Boosting towards the main. Because now the queens have to come down here. They're nowhere near the main. There's nothing to stop them from unloading. They've got a foothold. Solar has plenty to deal with this, and in fact, oh, 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 it hurts. 
Ah, uh, that's so frustrating. Maru almost made a mistake, but the medevac gets away with all hands. All right. And he loads up. I don't even know how he... Wait, he loads up into only the full health medevacs. Liberator over here, sieged up, just so it doesn't accidentally wander out of position. And so none of those sea creatures can get any closer to the battlefield. Thank you, Maru. 86 drones for Solar. He started 2-2 on time. It's going to be almost even for both of them. Infestation is on the way. He can start the hive. He has the economy. He's been under pressure here. But uh, he's, he's not taken any sort of meaningful damage. And now has the opportunity to counterattack. Uh, that's a huge part right now. Anything to threaten Maru and force him to keep units at home is... It's a huge impact. Just like those Bane links. Thank you, Solar. Wow, Maru, a little late, and now starting to slip. Like, just Solar threatening the other side of the map is making it so... Maru, he can't focus on everything. He's He is actually human, believe it or not. I, I know it seems unlikely, but he does. Uh, he has to move his camera from one base to another like any other man. Just way faster, usually. So uh, occasionally, medevacs aren't going to get focused quick enough, and, and the banelings will connect. And that means solar. It's not that he's going to go win the game now. He just bought himself some space. He's got He's maxed out. He's going to have 2-2 two -two done. Some time for creep spread. Inject's coming off. He's got 14 larvae and counting. The lurker den is nearly complete. We're not at the lurker stage of the game. In fact, vipers are probably highest priority. But here comes Maru. His tanks jam doing a pretty nice location. Solar just goes across the map, streaming into the third right now. Meanwhile, drops at the back on the Reaper Cliff. How incredibly annoying is that? The Liberator's still holding position. I can't believe he's using the Reaper Cliff like this. I totally can, but also... Ugh. Well, 2-2's two done across the board. Solar collapses on the army, rebuffed at the third. He decides on a juicier target, the army itself. Solar, not... Oh, the medevacs are going the wrong way! But most of them able to survive with their payloads intact for now. But the Hydras are closing in. Some full medevacs, one goes down with all hands. A Marine count, it's just like, he's got 58 Marines, nine medevacs. There's a couple tanks somewhere, but it's just Marines. Lurkers would be amazing right now if Solar could find any breathing room. The tanks in a nice position to support the attack, all two of them. The Marines are pre-splitting and stimming. The battle will the hinge on if the Banelings are able to connect. The tanks retargeted onto the Banes. Marines splitting back. Beautifully done so far. Maru off creep. He's in his comfort zone right now, but the Hydras are able to pick off the pre-split Marines. That's why they're so important in this battle. The Hydras are needed to force those Marines to group up. Otherwise, they're, they're going to get cut to pieces by the Hydra spines. But if they group up too much, then they melt to the Bane Links. That is what this unit composition is supposed to be about. And finally, Solar is able to bring it together and make it work. We've got two Vipers, nearly full energy. Oh, the Metavax went north, but uh, Solar had already split units to either deal with it or just preemptively, because he knows Maru. <laughs> Lurkers are on the way. Lurker range is on the way, very importantly. Still, a bunch of Marines, four Metavax to the south. A whole lot of banelings. Parasitic Bomb is a real and present danger. There is no Ghost Academy on the field whatsoever. No direct counter to those Vipers. Missile attack level one is about to complete. The Metavax shut down to the north. The Watchtower is claimed. And guess what? Blinding Cloud! Nothing on the tanks. He's gonna chase it down. Where's the Parasitic Bomb? Nor Blinding Cloud! Tanks can't see, and they got nothing else left to do. They're dead, shredded by the Zerglings. Liberators come up, gonna hold the choke point. The Hydra's caught, yanks one out, out of energy. The Liberators go down, and Maru will hold the high ground with a couple reinforcing tanks. Starts a Ghost Academy. And overall, Solar takes a win, but he still has a long ways to go to pressure Maru, who's on 80 SCV. He's getting 3-3 about to finish. Carapace is going to match it momentarily. No lurkers yet. The Marine count is too damn high. Another wave of Banelings is coming up. The tanks 
Oh, big connection, but the tanks are exposed. There's not enough Marines to cover. Another wave of Banelings is finished. Maru retargets. He gets some of the Bane. Only a couple in front. The Marines can easily gun them down. Reinforcements on the way. Plus three Carapace is done. Plus two mech weapons. Three more barracks. And a planetary is building at the fifth. We're going to go back to our corners for a moment. Nine more Lurkers for Solar in production. He found a little bit of space. He's going to morph whatever he can with it. The creep is still pushed back. Maru not going to lay his foot off the gas pedal right now when it comes to units and it comes to aggression. But the Lurkers are going to force a much more circumspect response until he has the ghosts, until he has more tanks. He just doesn't have what it takes to deal with these upgraded Lurkers. And right now, Solar is dismantling the units that could potentially counter them. Yanks out some tanks, leaves them with just Marines. A couple good swipes, and those Marines are gone. 198 to 160 supply. A bit of a desperation drop out there. Even the Queens are in position to deal with it. Goes down with all hands. 10 supply knocked out of the sky. Another medevac, a strong current away from destruction. Tanks will see. Lurkers on the wrong side for Maru. He's trying to pick a fight at the front because there's no home to go back to right now. The Lurkers are on top of the production. The tank is eviscerated the moment it comes out of the factory. The failings underneath. The Marines are not enough. And Solar takes it two to one. He holds. That's the difference to being able to threaten the counterattack and not. He played the map that, honestly, the position was about the same, except Solar got the upgrades quicker, and he was able to threaten a counterattack. And that was enough to keep Maru uh, off his back for, for long enough. Uh, it, it, it made the difference. And, well, here we are. Uh, we're going to game four. Solar up two to one. The lurker timing, it, it, it was dicey, but he found the space. Here's the thing, though. Now we're going ooh, to Waterfall, and uh, while Data C might not be decisively a Zerg map, I, I think I am confident saying, and this is quite a, there's quite a dichotomy in the map pool, but this is a Terran map, okay? Don't, no, 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 stop it. I will not... I'm commit... Like, it's... It, come on. The only way Zerg players are able to turn the tables is, is doing their own all -ins. But the rush distance is half that a day to see. The base count, almost that as well. This this map, as a Zerg, pretty much, you, you either get a huge lead or win the game early, or you'll get battered down because it does not take long for those tanks to come across the map. And many times in that last game, if the Marines and tanks had showed up 20 seconds earlier, well, guess what? That game would have ended much more than 20 seconds earlier. If you guys are enjoying the series, you made it this far. Come on. Uh, like, subscribe, whatever, whatever uh, place you're enjoying this. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, Dronely fans, either way. Um, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe. Yes, that's what they got there, right? Solar. <laughs> like... He's up to... I, I, how do I criticize? I'm just defaulting to Maru being on match point because he's Maru. It's like with Serum. Though less and less lately, but... I, it's just a reflex for me to assume whoever's playing against Maru is losing. So... I, but no! Solar is winning. Two to one. So, stop. I need to, I need to reassess. Double Reaper opener. Now, it hits a lot quicker. We got six lings on the way, by the way. But... There's still the threat of a counterattack coming across the map and essentially keeping Maru pinned to two bases. This is very annoying. But I doubt we're going to see 
the deadly damage. Pretty much as a sir, you just... Oh my god. No. It's not fun to lose it. Like, it's two reapers, not one reaper. It's not cause for immediate shame and uh, being disowned by your Zerg family. But losing losing a drone to one reaper is totally, 100%. Like, don't come back. Uh, come back when you finish college or something, because this pro gaming thing is not working out for you. But that is... Uh, two reapers, fine. Maru, fine. That is, and threepers, on the other hand. Well, things are getting even more dicey. Twelve more. Uh, so, important to note. He didn't see the bear. The, the overlord was sent to the left. Um, sent more towards the main. Because there is... I guess there is a pervert pillar on this one. But he didn't actually see. It was multi rex Until the third reaper came in. That is when uh, Solar realized what he was dealing with. But guess what? Maru's already adjusted. It is a bit of an awkward map for add-ons. But he moved the tech lab... I think he learned a little bit from that high-profile Baneling bust against Dark in the Champions Cup. But, yeah, the stim pack not in the wall. I I feel like putting the stim pack in the wall kind of forces... It's it's like a, a moral obligation to Baneling bust it at that point. Even if you don't think it's a good idea, you see a upgrading tech lab in the wall, and you kind of... Like, come on. <laughs> So, thankfully for everyone involved, uh, no tech lab in the wall. Banshee. I also want to point something else out, which I don't have to say. I can just point it out. Um, but, pro tip, that's what you say to sound smart while you're coming up with the rest of your sentence. Uh, it's not that I think it's a smart idea to, to say, I'm going to point this out. It's that I haven't figured out how to phrase it yet. And uh, you might be like, aren't you just buying more time at this stage? Well, yes. But you know what I want to point out? No 3CC this series at all. Uh, Maru, not, not going for the 3CC rush. The greedy... Oh my god, he's just going to Banely bust anyways. No, it's not even in the wall, Solar. I... Well, remember when I said you either kill him early or you die a slow or not so slow death? Well, it appears Solar agrees. Um, solar. With a whole lot down. The grenades looking good, doing some real damage, but two, two drones down. Oh no. He completely misread it. Oh no, and the bit, the, oh, uh, what? Was he expecting like a meta? He, I mean, there's obviously Marines, but oh no. He had no spores? It's a disaster. Hey, he's already lost too many drones. Now he has to do a Bane bust that Maru knows is coming. <laughs> oh. Oh, he lost, he lost 10 drones. He's trying to drone out of this. No, it's a disaster. It's an utter disaster. I was going to go Bane hunting. Wow. Solar misread this game. Like, he was speaking a different language here. He just assumed it'd be a quick bio follow-up. And he's semi-right, but he completely missed the option for Banshee absolutely unprepared. He even, he even panic F2'd and showed his Bane wings to Maru. Like, that's how you know. On top of the lack of any detection. Like, oh my. Oh god. I, 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 I'm lamenting. Okay? But he's... Uh, mm. It might look okay for now with the drone count. No, no, no. I'm telling you. Okay. Okay, Winter. Winter. It's a professional game. These guys are good. It's not time for coaching, all right? People come here for casting. Uh, not for your inner voice. Not for your critical commentary of people who beat you with their left hand in their sleep after eight bottles of soju. No. Maru coming in with the siege tanks. Finding a nice position on the high ground. And without that Baneling speed, Solar going to have a tough time engaging this army. 
The Queen's low on energy after that initial fight. The scan spots a manageable amount of Bane Links. And the Queen's on the high ground, gonna try to contend with the Banshee. The Solar have what it takes at the back. Plus one is completed for those Marines as they grind through the Queens. The Banelings are trickling in. The tanks, it could still go either way. Maru, a few more reinforcements across the map. The Baneling nest itself vulnerable. The Queen's looking for more. The tank's in a good position. And, and oh, the Banelings are close. No, he's not even close. It's not even remotely close. Let's not joke around here. Come on, let's be serious. Well, Maru ties it up. That, the, the solar just heading half a mile down the completely long, wrong road, trying to turn around and catch up, but sometimes he, he kind of out mind gamed himself. He, he was convinced. He convinced himself it was going to be a bio build. He never got any information besides the barracks and the reapers. So he was overprepared for the bio follow-up. And the banshees just completely knocked his socks off. Which was weird because he still had his shoes on. Though many players... Interesting convert... No, Maru. I, I was just going to get into the... A lot of players actually take their shoes off while playing. Because usually at home you don't play with shoes on. So you want to, you want to, and you, you see where that was going. Just compliment me on the, the soul I put into my casting and, and we'll move on because Maru is doing the hard wall proxy race. And, and with this build, the first scouting OVs are looking for a proxy Rex. It's so obvious. It becomes not obvious. Like, uh, it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Why are the SCVs jiggling right there? You know, we have a moment. So the reason you patrol the SCVs is one, they don't show up on idle workers, and two, they maintain their acceleration, so they don't have to start moving again if you want to build something or move them, because they're still moving at 100% speed. It takes like a quarter second for them to go up to that speed. Uh, on top of the idle worker thing. That's that's a lot of the reason why players will patrol their workers. Also, if they get attacked, they're more likely not to take as much damage. It's just generally something to keep them busy and keep them going. But guess what? They're gonna need to, These workers are going to need to keep busy on either side as Solar is already pulling the drones. Um, so here's the thing. The barracks form a wall, but walls work both ways. This is not, this isn't a supply depot. Well, he's going to have to lift the racks. He's got, it, the Predator drones are chasing. This is a very awkward scenario where he can kill all the Marines, but is it even worth it? He needs to stop the bunker. The bunker is by far the most dangerous part of this. Maru with a, a oh, he's still got the drones out there. No, you got to get the bunker. Solar, not like this. Not like this, Solar. Oh, he's really got to stop the bunker. Oh no, oh, it's already a lot of damage. It's, uh, oh, well, I mean, the Zerglings might be able to stop all the Marines. And he's got the SCV, you know? Uh, well, mm, he, he didn't, Maru's Marine Micro is just uncomfortably good. Well, the Queens, he's salvaging the bunker. The factory is almost done. Well, if he kills this OV, you know what? I do think the OV actually makes the difference here. I think the OV is what pushes this from about even to Maru favor. Oh god. And it's just gonna be three no speed Zerglings. He's now getting gas, but Solar's gonna be supply blocked. He's only a handful of workers ahead. Um, if those Zerglings could delay the command center at all. But here's the thing with the Proxy Racks follow-up. It, it's not even necessarily designed to kill your opponent. It's just to put them in this awkward spot where you probably, one, have more experience, and two, you can kind of control their options. And that's the beauty of the barracks. 
it has way more HP, and it actually flies faster than an Overlord. So it is the most reliable flying scout. He's going to get in. He's going to see. He's going to count the gas. He's going to see only 116 gas has been mined. He knows that Zergling speed is the extent of the options. And guess what? He's already got reactor Hellions on the way. And that means he's already responded to this. And he hasn't had to do anything different. Solar is just as Solar always does. I'm going to try to macro it out. And it may very well work. But unfortunately, Maru's going to have all the information. And Solar is left at that same place we kind of saw last game. Which is making assumptions that aren't necessarily guaranteed to be correct like if he comes up here he sees these marines he sees a hellion if he even saw it the hellion may just chase yeah the hellion doesn't tell him anything at this stage it tells him well it tells him there's at least one hellion but guess what armory's on the way six drones Oof. and this is a key timing Oh, six drones when you're under 40. That's a lot of larva. And he didn't kill any hellions, by the way. Like, <laughs> Oh, there's no bane nest. How many queens? Five queens. They just use their energy on creep. And they're gonna... They just morph <laughs> in their face. Watch this. Oh, uh, well, the queens are going to have to micro their hearts out. The Zergling's trying to make them turn around. He gets, very importantly, gets the medevac. The queen's doing a great job so far. Microing back on both fronts. Going to get one of the Hellbats. Down to four. But, oh no. But wait, there's Spore. But it's not in position! He's not, uh... The Liberator, the real kicker, because every queen was pulled for this. Oh, that's such a pain. That we're going to play the, the reposition game with the Liberator versus the Spore. The queens don't kill it particularly quick. Solar. Oh, it hurt. It's so painful. Oh... Oh, it hurts so much. <laughs> uh, he's trying to find the sweet spot. and But eventually the queens will deal with it. So, Solar has finally stopped the bleeding. He's up to 57 drones. He needs tech now. He needs tech yesterday, but now we'll have to suffice. Evolution Chamber Lair, <laughs> Extractor, Bailing Nest, yeah. <laughs> Production is bad. Now we're taking our macro turn. <sighs> well, here's the thing, though. You know what? No. Maru actually didn't have that much production behind. It's not untenable. Unless he loses, like, ten more drones, and then that's really bad. Eight... No, don't come back. Don't come back yet. It's not time. Oh my god, the Hellbats. Like eight drones plus not mining in your main for like 45 seconds. Okay. Well, that's certainly not great. And, and well, solar, it doesn't feel good as solar. But it, it, he does have the drone count. He has a fourth base mostly done. He has a macro hatch on the way. He got his 1-1 started. It's going to be a little behind on the attack, but he's got a hydrogen. He can recover. He can bounce back because Malru didn't have his production up that quick behind. He's just now started, but he's gone from five and going up to eight racks. It's an octo racks play. Solar needs to bat down these attacks, get his creep out there. And uh, it'll be in a good position to deal with this later mid-game stage. Which we've kind of, despite everyone and, and well, Maru and his activities, we've made it. Alright, Solar. 
This is it. It's on the line. It's very easy to get caught. Uh, even with all the creep spread. I mean, we, we've seen Maru already. We saw him on Moondance. We saw what happens when you just let him go. But Solar has everything he needs now. Starts plus two carapace the moment plus one finishes. Priorities in order. Baneling speed, eight seconds. Maru starts 2-2 two -two immediately as well. He's stopped building SCVs. He's at like 60. He's not going to build any gas on his third. It's just Marines. It's going to be so it's a dozen Marines at a time. That is a lot of Marines. In case you were, in case that wasn't clear, that's a large number of Marines. Is it too many Marines? That's the question, because Solar got supply blocked. At 142, the OVs have to run. Not again. Eight OVs on the way. Not what he wants to be using his larva on right now. The tanks are already jammed in between the natural, the third, and the fourth. And if he can control this choke point, he controls all the production. But the counterattack! The Zerglings get in, they kill 14 SCVs, and they can wrap around, come back, and join the attack. They need to do so at a timely manner. They're a little late to the party, but they're going to draw some fire. The Zerglings on the tanks. Hydra's helping out. Fourth base goes down. With it, some drones. The Hydra's are helping clean up the army. He got some economic damage done. And Maru, oh, Maru, he didn't bring the Marines. Okay, all right. There's no Banes. Oh no, the queens are getting caught on their own creep tumors. The creep spread was thrown back, but that's a, some Hydra is behind. He's just gonna stand. There's not, there's only one medevac with energy. The Hydra's, oh, it's just, it's so close. It's so close. It, the medevacs are out of energy. Like the Marines are not getting healed. <laughs> but Solar can't, he, White, get enough together. And and one bad fight. Oh no, he threw the drones in. Will that make the difference? I mean, the medevacs are perpetually out of energy. Does he have more on the way? One more. Maru hurting Akinot like he hasn't built any SCVs with this. This is it. This is the big attack. If if Solar finished plus two carapace. Maru about to have plus two. Uh, the Hydra count is dwindling. Some Zerglings in front. There's not that many Marines, but there's even fewer Hydras here. And it might be just too much. Oh. oh God, he was so close. A couple really unfortunate supply blocks. so close those fights were like six or seven zerglings away six or seven marines on either side well maybe not one unit but one uh, ten seconds of production oh god solar oh that hurts but for maru fans out there i know he has a couple what was it at I don't... Either way. I... What a series. Oh, they, now that game four really hurts. That misread. Maru laid the pressure. I, of course, how very Maru to go for a wall off two Rex. <laughs> Disgusting. But effective. Well, congratulations, Maru. Hopefully you enjoyed. Maybe you'll enjoy this one as well. Check that one out. Jimmy, put the thing up. I don't know, not just the chat. I don't, if they can't see it, they're just blind. It's fine. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck, have fun. See you next time. Stay chill.